It is now time for our weekly political segment, Texas Face Off. Joining me this morning is Ed Espinoza, Executive Director for Progress Texas, and Matt McCoviak, Chairman of the Travis County Republican Party. We thank you both for being here with us today. Good to be here. Yeah, and so today is a big day because a panel of federal judges in New Orleans is hearing oral arguments in the lawsuit to overturn the Affordable Care Act. Um, this is actually a Texas-led lawsuit. So, Matt, we'll, we'll start with you. This is by Attorney General Ken Paxton. Give our viewers a little background on what happened. Yeah, I mean, if you remember, Obamacare was held constitutional uh, because uh, Chief Justice John Roberts uh, said that the individual mandate was a tax uh, that went against the justifications that the Obama administration used, arguing dozens of times uh, that it wasn't a tax. Uh, the challenge that they have constitutionally now is that the individual mandate has been removed by Congress. And so if the, con the constitutional justification that the court used no longer applies, then the argument from the Texas Attorney General's office and I think 10 other states uh, is that, that the law is no longer constitutional. So. Uh, I, I know that, that folks on the other side are going to, you know, say that this is going to affect millions of people and talk about uh, pre-existing conditions and all kinds of other things. Th those are policy issues, uh, not constitutional issues, and that's really the issue here. The issue is whether this law continues to be constitutional now that the individual mandate's been removed. All right, let's go right on over to the other side. Hello, <laughs> other side. Hello. So, is it constitutional? Well, whether or not it's constitutional, I think the bigger issue is how does this affect people's lives because the whole constitution when you're talking about policies when you're talking about any of these issues the bottom line it always comes back down to the people and republicans have had umpteenth lawsuits against the affordable care act they've lost all of them i believe maybe one or two they had a victory here and there but for the most part the affordable care act is the law of the land 20 million people have health insurance because of it and every time republicans try to repeal it they have never replaced it. Up until the Texas legislative session this last year, there was a move to expand Medicaid, to do something for the state to have some system to cover people, and it was rejected on the floor of the Republican-controlled House of Representatives. So this is an issue that has been an ideological one for a long time, but the bottom line is, does it help people or does it not? And yes, we'll talk about pre-existing conditions because that's a major issue here. I, I have to... to agree with what you know Matt just said which is you did exactly what he said you were going to do instead of talking about the constitutionality we talked about the policy aspects of yeah. it. I mean can you really separate the two do you feel like no I don't think you can I, I look I yes I, I I talked about how this affects people you can talk about the constitutionality of it I'm not a judge that's not up for me to decide they can make that ideological argument the bottom line is when they if they win that case how, what are the, what's their plan next? Because they've had numerous opportunities to replace it, and they never have. And maybe this is, comes down to a constitutional question, but millions of people, 20 million in the U.S., 900,000 in Texas, will be left in the balance. That, if anything, is the most important thing here. So, Matt, let's talk policy. For the Republican Party, what is the solution? Well, what would happen, first of all, this isn't going to get decided anytime soon. Right. The Fifth Circuit is hearing arguments today. It'll take several months, I presume, for them to rule. And then once they rule, would it, the losing side will appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, and that may take a year. So we're still, you know, 6, 12, 18 months uh, from this being resolved. Uh, if you did get to a point where Obamacare was, was ruled unconstitutional, what would happen if you st were still dealing with the current Congress uh, is you'd have to have a bipartisan solution. And I actually think that may be even better for the country. One of the biggest challenges with Obamacare is it was done on a party line basis. The Democrats jammed it through, through Congress without any Republican support, without any bipartisan support. And so you don't have both parties invested uh, in, the, in the final product. Uh, you know, I don't think the court necessarily throws constitutionality aside and, and thinks about it in partisan terms. I think they do look at the constitutional issues. The reality is Obamacare's chickens are coming home to roost. It, it was basically held constitutional on a really narrow technicality over Justice John, Chief Justice John Roberts' unique uh, interpretation that the individual mandate was a tax. Uh, the fact that that's now been removed by Congress removes that constitutional basis, and that is the, that is the fundamental issue. I don't believe pre-existing conditions are ever going to come back. If this were struck down, the political pressure would be there. Republicans support the pre-existing condition provision, and that would continue in a, new, in, a new, in a new bill, and there would be urgency on both sides to come to the table and address it in a bipartisan way. I think that would be an improvement. You know, it's just interesting because particularly when we look at people in Texas, Texas has the highest uninsured rate in the country.
So particularly people in this state want to see something done. Uh, you know, we're, we're obviously running out of time. You two are probably not going to solve this problem right now. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, what is the issue with why can't, if you had to just boil it down to one thing, why can't we find a solution? Well, I mean, there are, there are really different visions on health care, uh, and it's hard to sort of split the baby. Um, Republicans uh, believe in choice uh, on health care. They believe in the private sector. Uh, they believe uh, that, that government uh, providing health care is not the answer. Um, and Democrats believe that health care is a, quote, right. Uh, health care is a service. Requiring a doctor to, to, to give health care to someone uh, gets rid of the, the private sector aspects of health care that have made uh, our health care industry as innovative uh, as anywhere in the world. So there are very different versions in how you should deliver health care, and I think that's the problem. It's very hard to bridge those differences. Ed, what do you say? Is it, in fact, a, you know, a choice and not a right? I, I do think access to health care is a right. I think we have an obligation as civilized society to provide services to people who are in need. How they get them is what is under debate here. But when the private sector solely ran health insurance, pre-existing conditions were not covered. And in the 10 years since the Affordable Care Act has been passed, Republicans have done nothing to offer an alternative. They talk about repeal and replace. There is never a replace. As recently as the past few months at the Texas legislature, they had an opportunity to do it and they declined. So there's a lot of rhetoric behind that, but there's no, you know, they, they talk the talk, but they don't walk the walk. So until we can actually see an alternative here, it's hard to take any of this seriously. Well, again, not going to solve it today on <laughs> KVU, but if you guys want to catch up on this conversation and what you missed, of course, this interview will be posted onto KVU.com right after the newscast. We'll be right back.